Hello everyone and welcome back to the statistics video lecture series. Today we are going to be picking up with hypothesis testing for population mean, but in this case the population standard deviation sigma is unknown. So when the population standard deviation is unknown, if the sample size is at least 30 or the population is normally distributed, you can use the T distribution. So when you know sigma, you can use the Z distribution. You can use the standard normal distribution and a Z score. When you do not know sigma, you can use the T distribution. Now we covered the T distribution back in chapter six and the T distribution has its own table. Remember that the degrees of freedom is sample size n minus 1. So what we're going to be using for this is actually rejection regions. So when we test for a mean and sigma is not known, we're going to use rejection regions, which means that we need the critical value that separates the rejection region from the non-rejection region. This critical value is going to be called T naught. So what you're going to do is you're going to specify the level of significance and the degrees of freedom. The level of significance is alpha. The degrees of freedom is sample size n minus 1. And then you're going to use the t distribution table to find the critical value or critical values. And what you do with that table value depends on whether it's a left tail test, a right tail test, or a two tail test. If you have a left tail test, you're going to look in the one tail alpha column and then take that table value and put a negative sign on it. If you have a right tail test, you're going to use the one tail alpha column with a positive sign. If you have a two tails test, you're going to look under the two tails alpha column and then you're going to have two critical values. One is going to have a negative sign, one's going to have a positive sign. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the critical value T naught for a left tail test when your alpha is equal to 0 0.05 and n is equal to 21. So let's get the degrees of freedom first. The degrees of freedom is one less than the sample size, so degrees of freedom is 20. Now this is a left tail test. Left tail tests only involve one tail. So you're going to look in the one tail alpha column, which is right here. And our alpha is 0 0.05, so you're going to look at the alpha, one tail alpha 0 0.05, which is right there. Then the row that you go down is going to be the degrees of freedom. So you're going to go into this column right here, this one tail alpha of 0 0.05, and you're going to go down to 20 degrees of freedom, which is right there. And then you will get a table value I'm just going to circle it. Your table value is 1.725. Now, since this is a left tail test, this is going to be on the left tail. So like it said on this slide, if you have a left tail test, you're going to use the table value from the one tail alpha column with a negative sign. So your critical value T naught is going to be negative 1.725. So then for this next one, we're going to find the critical value T naught for a right tail test with alpha equals 0 0.01 and N is 17. So first, we're going to subtract 1 from the sample size to get the degrees of freedom. So we have 16 degrees of freedom. A right tail test only involves one tail. So we're going to go in the one tail alpha over 2.01. So we're going to go into this column right there. So we're looking in this column, one tail alpha of 0 0.01. Then the row we go down, we're going to go down to 16 degrees of freedom. So when you, you know, the, where they meet in the middle is right there. So your table value is 2.583. So then because this is a right tail test, your critical value is going to be on the right. That is going to be positive. So when you have a right tail test, you're going to use the one tail alpha column with a positive sign. So your T naught is going to be positive 2.583. Then we're going to, for this next one, we're going to find the critical values negative T naught and positive T naught for a two tail test with alpha equals 0 0.10 and N equals 26. So first, we're going to get the degrees of freedom, which is one less than the sample size. So we have 25 degrees of freedom. 
Then for this one, since this is a two-tail test, we're going to look in the two-tails alpha column, which is right there. And we're going to go into two-tails alpha of 0 0.10. So we're going to look in this column right here, two-tails alpha 0 0.10. Then we're going to go all the way down to 25 degrees of freedom and you're going to get an initial table value of 1.708. So then, because this is a two-tail test, you're going to have two critical values because you have two tails. One, tail. one critical value is going to be on the left with the left tail. One critical value is going to be on the right with the right tail. So your negative T naught is going to be negative 1.708. And your positive T naught is going to be positive 1.708. So those are going to be your two critical values for a two tail test. So since we're going to be using rejection regions for a T test for a mean, what we need to do is once you find your critical values, you're going to take your test stat, which is still going to be X bar, and you're going to turn it into a T score, not a Z score. So for a t-test for a mean, you're going to use the test stat, the sample mean, x-bar. So your test stat is still the same. It's going to be x-bar. So the t-score is going to be given by this formula right here. So to turn your sample mean into a t-score, you're going to do the sample mean, x-bar, minus the mean in the hypothesis, mu divided by the sample standard deviation s divided by the square root of n. So keep in mind that this is for when sigma is unknown. If sigma is unknown, then you're going to use a t-test and you will use sample standard deviation instead of population standard deviation. Now, provided that the sample's random and either the population is normally distributed or the sample size is at least 30. And remember the degrees of freedom are n minus 1. So here is the process in words of how to perform what is called a t-test for the mean, and this is assuming that sigma is unknown. So you should read the problem first and first verify that sigma is not known because if sigma is not known, you're going to use the sample standard deviation S instead. If sigma is known, you're going to use the process that we covered in the previous sections and that'll be a Z test. But if sigma is not, if sigma is not known, you're going to use a T test for the mean. So the next thing you do is you are going to state your two claims, H0 and HA, your null and your alternate hypotheses. And then don't forget to label which one is the actual claim. Then you're going to, based on the symbol that is in HA, figure out what type of test you have and identify your alpha, your level of significance that is given in the problem. Then you need to identify the degrees of freedom. Degre de de degrees of freedom is N minus 1. Then, using the process that we covered on the previous few slides, you're going to determine your critical values using the T distribution table based on whether you have one tail or two tails and whether it's a left, right, or two tail test. That will help you form your rejection region. So once you figure out your critical values, you're going to draw a distribution. You are going to shade your rejection regions. And then you're going to turn your uh, test stat into a standardized test stat, you're going to turn your sample mean into a t-score by using this formula. Then you're going to put your t-score, you're going to graph it on that graph that you just drew. If your t-score is sitting in the rejection region, you reject h naught. If it is not in the rejection region, you fail to reject h naught. So at this step here, you make your initial decision. And then, don't forget when you finish up, don't forget to interpret your decision in the context of the problem. Don't forget to tie it back to whichever the claim actually was. So let's say that a used car dealer cl says or claims that the mean price, so that's population mean, of a two-year-old sedan in good condition is at least $20,500. So I'm just going to translate that sentence into math really quick. So mean, population mean, is mu. At least is greater than or equal to $20,500.
So since this is a greater than or equal to, this statement involves equality, this is actually our null hypothesis. So H naught is going to be mu is greater than or equal to 20,000. Let's try this again. So our H naught is going to be mu is greater than or equal to 20,500. And then I'm going to label that as the claim. Then I'm going to get the alternate hypothesis. The opposite of greater than or equal to is less than. So mu is less than 20,500. So let's go through and identify the rest of what we are given. You suspect this claim is incorrect and find that a random sample of 14 similar vehicles has a mean price of 19,850. So your sample size N is 14. Because this 19,850 was in the same sentence as random sample, this is our sample mean. So our sample mean X bar is 19,850. And a standard deviation, again, since this is all in the same sentence as the random sample, this is sample standard deviation. So your sample standard deviation S is 1,084. Is there enough evidence to reject the dealer's claim at alpha equals 0 0.05? And we're going to assume that the population is normally distributed, which means that we can use the T distribution. So let's figure out next what type of test we have. Since the alternate hypothesis contains a less than symbol, this is going to be a left tail test. So what we're going to do is you're going to use the process that I outlined a few slides ago to look up one tail alpha 0 0.05 in the T distribution table. And then you're going to take that table value and you're going to put a negative sign on it. So your T naught is going to be negative 1.771. So again, you're going to look in the one tail alpha 0 0.05 and then put a negative sign on it. So that is going to be your critical value. So I'm just going to draw the distribution as best I can with this stylus. Negative 1.771. Again, it's just somewhere here on the left. What I have just shaded is rejection region. And everything that is not shaded is a fail to reject H naught. So there's our T naught, negative 1.771, right there. So then I'm going to next turn my test stat X bar into a T score. So let's get the T score. The T score is going to be given by this formula here. So it's going to be the sample mean minus the mean in the hypothesis divided by sample standard deviation over the square root of N. So our T score is going to be X bar 19,850 minus the mean in the hypothesis 20,500 divided by the sample standard deviation, 1,084, divided by the square root of n, so the square root of 14. Parentheses around the numerator, parentheses around the denominator, and then you should get a t-score of approximately negative 2.24. Right, I'm going to switch colors here so we can see what where this lies. All right, so next we're going to put the t-score on the graph that we just drew. So this, since this is a negative, this is to the left of the mean, and it is actually further to the left of the mean than negative 1.771. So yeah, there's negative 1.771. Right there, there is our t-score, negative 2.24. So t is clearly sitting in a rejection region. So since T is sitting in the rejection region, our initial decision is that we are going to reject H naught. Now, as far as interpreting, remember, we labeled which one was the claim. Your claim was actually H naught. So since we have rejected H naught, there is enough evidence to reject the dealer's claim that the mean price is at least 20,500. So since we rejected H naught and the claim was H naught, we have just rejected the dealer's claim. Just give me a second. 
All right, if you would like to attempt this one on your own before we get started, feel free to pause the video right now and resume when you are done working. All right, so for this next one, an industrial company claims that the, so there's our claim, the mean mu pH level of the water in a nearby river is 6.8. So they are claiming that the mean pH is exactly equal to 6.8. So translating that into math is translated into math is the equal sign. So mu equals 6.8. Since this is a statement that involves equality, I mean, it, it, it clearly has an equal sign. So since mu has an equal sign and it involves equality, this is actually the null hypothesis. Because remember, the null hypothesis always contains a statement of equality. So in this case, our claim happened to be the null hypothesis. So let's just get the alternate hypothesis really quick. The opposite of equals is not equals. So mu is not equal to 6.8 is our alternate hypothesis. So let's go through and let's get the rest of our information. So you randomly select 39 water samples. So that's your sample size and measure the pH of each of them. The sample mean and sample standard deviation are 6.7 and 0.35 respectively. So your sample mean pH is 6.7 and your sample standard deviation S is 0.35. Is there enough evidence to reject the company's claim at alpha equals 0.05? Okay, so since we know the sample standard deviation and not the population standard deviation, we're going to use the t-distribution for this. So since we know s, we're going to use the formula that involves s, and that is going to be t-scores and the t-distribution and rejection regions and all of that. So let's first figure out what type of test we have. So to figure out the type of test, we're going to go into the alternate hypothesis. Since the alternate hypothesis contains a not equals, this is a two-tailed test. So we're going to have two critical values, and they're each going to come from the t-distribution table. Now what you do is you're going to go into the t-distribution table. You are going to look up the two tails alpha 0.05 down to the degrees of freedom, which was one less than the sample size, so degrees of freedom is 38. So you're going to go to two tails alpha 0.05 to degrees of freedom 38, and then you're going to have two critical values, one negative and one positive. So your negative critical value is going to be negative 2.024. And then your positive T naught is going to be net, uh, positive 2.024. So let's draw our rejection regions. So since this is a two-tailed test, we have two rejection regions, one here on the left and one here on the right. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be labeled appropriately. So there's our negative T naught, which is, you know, negative 2.024. And then right here is our positive T naught, positive 2.024. Everything that I have shaded, you would reject H naught. Everything that is not shaded would be failed to reject H naught. So this is reject. This is reject. All right, so now that we've got our critical values and our rejection regions, let's get our t-score. So we're going to now turn our sample mean into a t-score. So our t-score is going to be the sample mean, x-bar, 6.7, minus the mean mu in the hypothesis, 6.8, divided by the sample standard deviation s, which is 0.35, divided by the square root of n, so the square root of 39. And since our sample size is at least 30, we can use the t-distribution for this without an issue. Parentheses around numerator and denominator, you should get a t-score of approximately negative 1.78. So we're going to now put negative 1.78 on our graph. Remember, 0 is you know, here in the middle. This is clearly to the left of the of the mean, but it's not quite as far to the left as negative 2.024. So, you know, it's close, but it's not quite as far to the left. So T is going to be sitting right there. 
So T is not in a rejection region. So our initial decision is that we are going to fail to reject H0. So that's your initial decision. Now don't forget that you need to interpret this in the context of the problem. The claim was H0 and we have just failed to reject it. So there is not enough evidence to reject the company's claim. I'm sorry for how illegible that was, but there is not enough evidence to reject the company's claim. Since your claim was H0 and we failed to reject it, we have failed to reject the claim. All right, so that is it for hypothesis testing for the mean where sigma is unknown. So in any t uh, problem where you were asked to test a hypothesis about population mean, make sure that you check to see whether you have population standard deviation or sample standard deviation. If you have population standard deviation, that means that you know sigma. So you're going to use the standard normal distribution and the z-score formula that involves sigma. If you know the sample standard deviation, that means you do not know sigma, and you're going to use the T distribution and the T score formula that involves S, the sample standard deviation. So just make sure that you are paying attention to that. So for the next section, we are going to be testing hypotheses about population proportions, which is going to be an entirely different process because we are going to be testing an entirely different population parameter. So thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.